idea of jujitsu is to enable the person to wait for the right opportunity to defeat your opponent. Jiu-Jitsu today craving for a better evaluation of who is the man in Jiu-Jitsu. Where is no points will be a motivation aspect to fighters go for a submission. It starts with one family, you know, and uh, I'll be fighting against one guy he has part of this family, you know. Maybe he sees me as like, whatever, just he don't race, you guys been around for a long time, you know, he's just, he's spoiled. But what's the worst that can happen? That he taps me, which is very unlikely. Roger is one of my idols. For me, it's a great opportunity to fight against him. You know, it's difficult to say what will happen. I think I will expect to, to, to reach a good position and I don't let him escape. I think I'm my best to submit him. For this fight, I might just go and do what I need to do. Of course, I'm going to compete to win and do my best. Of course, I'm going to fight, you know. I respect him a lot, but I will do my best to win. 20 minutes and submissions only, so I'm sure it will be a great match. To win, you have to finish the person. You have to tap them out. I'm Budo Jake, here with Budo Dane, as usual. And tonight we have a special guest, Halak Gracie. Halak, how are you doing today? Amazing, man. Thank you. Just came back from the beach. Nice. What'd you do at the beach? Did you bodyboard? Man, just jump in the water. Yeah, it was, it was pretty serious uh, current, but <laughs> I, I managed. It was all right. Do you surf as all also? I do, man. I just recently too, like just started more than ever. So it's been it's been really good. That's it's been great. great. Well, we and the chat room have a lot of questions for you about Amanda Morris. Yes. We'll get into that a little bit later. But this is the first time we've really actually had a chance to sit down and talk. So yeah. I guess, let's let's start from the beginning. Growing up, Gracie, h how was that? Growing up Gracie, man, um, wow, must have been like growing up samurai, you know, same thing. Like you just, jujitsu is everything, it's very serious, you know, and everything that you're, anytime you're not doing jujitsu, it's like, you know, climb this tree, climb this wall, you know, see how fast you can climb that wall, you know, everything is a, is a kind of a little challenge, you know, so it's definitely like a very positive, challenging environment, you know, definitely. Did you ever get tired of all the... Your dad, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce you properly. Your dad's Horion Gracie. You're an instructor at the Gracie Academy in Torrance. You're an MMA vet and, um, and an accomplished BJJ practitioner and one of the men behind Metamorris. Yeah. So did you ever get, um, did, did you get tired of the pressure of your dad pushing you all the time? No, I mean, uh, I didn't really get pushed per se. You know, it was more of like the, just the environment that pushes you, you know, and it's more of your peers. So having like my brothers, the fact that they're dangerous, you know, and I have to stay ready. Otherwise, I'm just going to fall by the wayside, you know. So it's more within the, the, within my peers and within, you know, just my level. My dad wouldn't be like, man, you have to, you know, it, he would just do his thing. And he set a very good example, a positive example as a human being, you know, and somebody who was a, a pioneer in his own way. So it was just, he was inspirational, but definitely a lot of pressure in the concept of just on that level of, you know, who I was training with and just my own aspirations and, you know, my own timing in the game, you know. How many siblings do you have? We have nine. I have nine. And how many of them train regularly? I know some of them are too young to train, but the yeah, ones that are... Yeah, so like essentially my brothers, you know, and um, even my younger brothers now are starting to get into it and they're 10 and 8, you know, so actually no, 12 and 10. So they keep growing. I just, I can't keep track. Um, but man, yeah, like everybody's training. All the guys are training. All the girls, you know, Hiani's in Brazil, Jose's doing the Gracie Nationals and or Rose is doing the Gracie Nationals. Uh, my sister Sejina is an interior designer and an artist and just, you know, amazing person. But they're all dangerous, but they don't need to spend too much time on the mat, you know. Mm -hmm. How was Jiu-Jitsu introduced to you when you're a young Gracie? Dude, just games, you know, like like Hidon was saying in one of our videos, it's just games, you know, like it's just, you, you don't even realize it. You're getting thrown around, you're getting tossed around and it's just all of a sudden you you realize like, man, there's there's some meaning to this, there's some techniques to this and hey, and then you realize that people, you know, like, are really serious about it. That they really feel like you should be a, at a certain level and you should be good. Otherwise, you know, you're you're not really doing what you should be doing. You know, or you get that feeling, and it, it almost it's natural. But it's it's so positive, man. It's so good because 
look at what most kids are doing. You know, they're just sitting right. around. Like, they have no idea, no direction. So it was cool. It was a solid direction, something healthy and positive and, you know, inspiring, for sure. There's roughly three sections of jiu-jitsu. There's self-defense, sport jiu-jitsu, and MMA. About what percentages would you say you, you teach or you're interested in those three sections? Man, for me personally, you know, I, I try to keep it balanced, you know, and I... I you, you, what were the three sections? I'm sorry. Self-defense, sport jiu-jitsu, and MMA. Yeah, man. Uh, for me, they're almost kind of the same thing, you know, if that's fair to say. Um, and, I'm, of course, I don't compete actively in any current jiu-jitsu. You know, I haven't competed actively in a long time in sport jiu-jitsu. But the way that I just grew up training was, man, you just go for it. And, you know, whenever somebody gives up or somebody's tired or the time runs out on the clock, you just stop. So for me, training to try to catch somebody and taking advantage of their weaknesses and using leverage and timing and all these things, that applies to MMA, applies to Jiu-Jitsu, applies to sport. You know, so when I teach classes, I, I try to just, you know, teach the, the things that I feel like are necessary for the people at that time. Um, but, you know, specifically, I'll teach seminars and I'll say, hey, you know, what I'm going to what I'm about to show you could be applied I think in any one of these areas, you know, so, but not always, you know, sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I'll focus specifically on MMA, uh, specifically on self-defense, you know, as a, as a, as a certain idea and some more technical aspects of self-defense, but really self-defense, you know, if you know how to do solid jujitsu, you can defend yourself very well, you know, as, as far as the scramble in a fight, there's some little details that some people leave out depending on how they're training or may bring in or whatever. But, you know, for me, it's been very close all my life. Do you follow much uh, sport jiu-jitsu? I do, man. And, uh, like, especially, obviously, lately more than ever. Um, but there was a time where, for me, I always knew, like, who was on top and who was, you know, it's always exciting to see who's on top and who's catching who and why, you know. So it's it's cool. It's good. Well, let's get into the meat. Uh, people want to know Here about Gato Morris. Starting at the beginning, where did the idea come from? Wow. Man, I say my grandfather, you know. <laughs> When somebody asked me that, I mean, but obviously it came from just the influence. It came from our family. It came from, you know, the idea that you should compete to catch the other person, you know, like chess. You don't get points for moving your piece, you know. You get the checkmate or you stalemate, you know, and that's it. There's no, like, basketball, you score a hoop or you don't, you know. Like, if everybody just runs around, who, you know, how do we know who's really better at any given time you know so that concept has always been around that's always been the focus and I felt like you know not even just me but the influence in the game and in the in the in the overall energy around jujitsu just seemed it was headed in that direction it just seemed like hey do something that allows more freedom for these people so myself my partner Robert Zepps and a couple other people on the production side, Echo Charles and some other guys, we got together and we just said, man, let's make something really special. Let's do something really unique. And let's basically highlight these, these competitors, you know, these athletes who deserve so much respect for what they're doing. And, you know, like, let's take it to a level where people can actually appreciate, even if they don't know jujitsu, they can say, wow, like these guys, they deserve respect. They're serious, they're dedicated, they're disciplined. I want my kids to be like that guy, you know, and all those things are in place, but there's just not enough support on the on the on the production side and on the administration side to to really support that and specifically for those high level guys and so it just seemed like an opening in the game you know for the people that don't know what we're talking about tell us a little bit about the rules and and what metamorphosis is yeah yeah so it's a competition where essentially it's um it's not even as much of a competition it's a show it's an event where seven or ten matches will take place in the future or whatever or six matches in one night and the focus is you know only to get the best in the world bring them together and give them 20 minutes to roll and essentially take out the points take out the idea that if one sweep occurs or one takedown at the right time and then the time runs out you're coined the, the, the man or the champion of that match you know instead leave it up to purely a submission focus where if I don't submit you Let's tie the match and let's assume that we'll come back and try this again later because that's all that really matters anyways. You know, so that essentially was the, the real, um, I guess, focus of, and the drive of the whole event. And uh, it's, it's something that I think is you have to create space. You have to have an area where only the best will function, you know. 
if you have basketball and you have Kobe playing in the same place where you know all of the the kids who are just getting out of high school are playing, it, you, it's too confusing. You don't really have a, you can't really grasp it. You know, if I wanted to bring somebody from another country and sit them down in an, an event and say, hey, this is what jujitsu is about, where are they going to sit? Right. That was one of the things that struck me is because um, when you know you see the pictures from the book, the Gracie Way. And um, in Helio's match with um, Kimura, it looks like it's in, <laughs> you know what I mean? It looks like it's in an arena and there is a huge crowd around it. Right. And, uh, it, and like it's a mainstay event, like an MMA fight or something for a grappling match. Exactly. Yeah. And it, when I saw the Metamorphs format, I immediately thought, I wonder if, it, is that the case? Is that what you're kind of hearkening to uh, in a way? Man, I think naturally, you know, that's kind of, yeah, I didn't think of that, you know, but after the fact, I was like, man, I thought about that fight too. And I was like, wow, that's so cool how history is kind of repeating itself that, yeah, in that sense. But man, absolutely. They, my grandfather, when he fought Kimura, that arena was Maracanã Stadium, right. which is like, I think the biggest stadium in Brazil. And I think it's one of the three largest in the whole world. I think it seats like 150,000 or something ridiculous. And um, they cut the stadium in half or a certain part of the stadium and they had it, you know, because you can't do the mat in the middle of the stadium, it's too big and people can't even see. Right. So they pushed everything to the side and they did it in there. But just the fact that they got that stadium, you know, right. they did that place. It was like the whole, all of Brazil was there and everybody respects it on a level where, you know, my grandfather was an inspiration to the youth, to the entire nation of Brazil. He was somebody who they looked up to and they saw as like a, a hope you know, for Brazil, and it really was. And if you fast forward, Brazil is on a whole different level right now as an economy. And I would have to say that has something to do with my family, it has something to do with jujitsu and the whole popularity and all these companies now that are coming to America and cross marketing and all that stuff that's taking place is, is, really, is really something that can absolutely lift a nation. So my grandfather's legacy is fully alive. And, and to see, you know, an arena like that take place and something like an event like that and people actually show up and be interested to see like, man, is he going to be able to do it? And there was no punching. Is Andrew Gracie going to be able to survive for three minutes against this guy who's this champion in jiu-jitsu from Brazil in, in more kind of judo jiu-jitsu? But man, that's, that's pretty intense, you know. And was this in your mindset mm -hmm. too? Because one of the things I contest is what jiu-jitsu needs to grow as an art and, and to get more attention is that we need to be able to draw more people that aren't necessarily training you know, not to make it a spectator sport, but something like this, like a showcase event where you have, you know, personalities and fighters and you can get eyes that aren't necessarily in the sport on this or on, in the art on the art. Yeah, man, absolutely. You know, and, and it's, it's about respect, you know, and I think that's that's where it goes back to the stadium philosophy, because, man, you have to have respect, you know, for these guys and you have to have respect for the, the, the art. You know, you have to it's, it's a lot of respect, you know, to even consider putting them on that level and saying, here's your pedestal, basically, because, man, that's how important it is, you know. And I believe and I grew up believing that jujitsu is that powerful in people's lives. You know what I mean? Like, it's that important. If you train jiu-jitsu, doesn't it make you a happier person? Immediately. <laughs> no, was, exactly. So. When I joined jiu-jitsu, I was literally looking for something to help give me direction. And that's from the first time I was training. I was like, this, done. <laughs> it's amazing, man. And then not only that, it affects your relationships. It affects your, your, your relationships with women. Everything. Now, like, so women need to be interested in jiu-jitsu. You know what I mean? They right. need to be like, man, wow, why is this stuff? Why does it make, you know, my boyfriend stronger? Why does it do this for him? Why does it make our relationship better? You know, why? Maybe I should let him train more rather than complaining about it, you know, right. and getting jealous. So, which I'm happens. I'm still thinking about, <laughs> what, what were you talking about changing your relationship with women? Because <laughs> when I think of how it affects my relationship with women, I'm married, but, um, you know, instead of just hugging, like, I'll go for an underhook. Uh, <laughs> yeah. bed, like, I'll, I'll recover a full guard. Dude, and it's like a that. whole different level of potential, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. I know, right? You're like, girl, do you know what it means that I gave you both underhooks? Do you yeah. know what this means right now? <laughs> Man, it's inspiring, though. You know, I think, like, for kids now to be able to see, you know, if, if you, a year ago, two years ago, if you wanted your child to be a professional jujitsu athlete, what does that mean for his future? You used to not look very good. Right. You used to look like, all right, you're going to spend a lot of time on a mat. Eventually, you'll probably have to get a real job. And or just travel the world and do seminars as much as you can and stay afloat. And man, that's you know, that's not that's not cool, man. That's not enough, you know, for, for what these guys are doing. And not only that, for the effect that jujitsu has on the planet, 
more people should learn, more people should teach, and more people should share their knowledge, you know, and, and more people should strive to be the best, you know, and that's what creates that whole following, you know, so what's the best, you know? On October 7th, 2012, history will be made and the wait will be over. The International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation presents the first ever Masters and Seniors World Jiu-Jitsu Championships at the Long Beach Pyramid. And VudoVideos.com will bring it to you live with our exclusive multi-mat technology. All fights will be shown. Mark your calendar and join us for this historic pay-per-view event. BudoVideos.com, home of the world's largest selection of quality jiu-jitsu kimonos. Show your roll, Storm, Tatami, Bull Terrier, Venom, and others. Styles from more than 30 top brands in stock and ready to ship. BudoVideos.com, you're only a click away from owning a new gi today. Hulk, I understand uh, you're paying some nice payouts uh, in this event. I don't want to push you for the numbers, but is there anything you want to share as far as uh, the financial side of the event? Man, we're giving about 100000 total around there. Nice. Yeah. Do you think uh, this event is going to be profitable? Yes. Now, if it isn't, we're not worried. We just we're keep, we want to keep moving forward, you know? And it's, it, it's already profitable as far as the way we see it, as far as it being a success, and as far as people realizing the level and the magnitude. It's, um, it's, it's beyond what we expected, you know? So we're, we're very happy. Nice. Absolutely. So make money or not, your event is going to continue. You're going to have more events in the future. Absolutely. Oh, Do you have yes. any perspective date of when the next one might be? Come on, man. <laughs> Dude. We're trying to get an exclusive We haven't even gotten to this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Is it like an annual thing or more than that? Yeah, man, we want to try to do as many as we can. You know, at this point, I can't logically say because yeah. we don't have we don't have that in place. Okay. Um, but definitely, there's going to be a lot more. You know, awesome. it's going to be something that, you know, eventually, a competitor, a top competitor, somebody like Rodolfo or these guys, you know, Shanji or whoever, they should be able to live off of this. You know, mm -hmm. they should be able to make enough money and support their families and and only have to compete three, four times a year right. and be successful. You know. I don't if, see why not. If someone's doing your event and maybe the Abu Dhabi Pro in, in Abu Dhabi, that's a nice income if they can pull gold at all of those. Definitely, yeah. Halleck, your uncle, Hicks and Gracie, had an awesome event, a one-off called uh, the Budo Challenge. And his mat, his, I don't remember what the, how long the rounds were. I think it were five or six minutes, maybe three rounds. I think he did three rounds of, of two minutes, actually, or three rounds of three minutes, something like that. That's right. There, there are fast packs, a lot, of, a lot of action. Why did you choose 20 minutes? Why do you think that's better? Yeah, man, I think when you, his, his, we had talked about that, you know, I talked to Hickson personally and he had mentioned that, you know, this is the way I did it for my thing. And a lot of the focus for him was to make it exciting, you know, and man, I, although I completely respect that, you know, I don't think that that really does justice, you know, for the guys. I don't think it makes it to where they fully have the ability to express their jujitsu, you know, it makes it very uh, a very tight constraint. Now, it might come to that eventually, and we're not like a hundred percent stuck on these rules forever. We are just establishing ourselves as a brand that will highlight these competitors and will highlight the inspiration that it will have on people in their lives, you know. So it's there's so many different ways that we're going to spin it, but for right now, we want to enable more space and we want to give them, you know, more freedom. And, and no one can argue with that, you know, of course. If you can do a no time limit, it's exciting as well in its own way. It's just a question of who can stay and watch that. And, you know, but 20 minutes, we feel if you watch a basketball game, how long is that? You know, yeah. an hour and a half. Why? Because people just are that interested, you know. So I think it's, it's coming to a time where people are realizing and appreciating. They're more interested in jujitsu. If you have an amazing commentator, which we do, a couple amazing commentators, amazing you know if you if you really bring everything together you can make it something where people can can really appreciate you know and, and that's the mission you know and at this point we're we're going you know onward and upward in the best way that we can that's great to hear um let's get into some details about the rules um, i haven't seen anything on paper saying what is illegal yeah. is there anything that's illegal yeah heel hooks are illegal with the gi are there gi matches and no gi matches in the same night? There's one gi, there's one no gi match, which is the um, Dean Lister match. So Dean Lister is no gi with uh, Shanji Hibero, uh, which is um, Shanji just came in and replaced um, Kevin Casey. Kevin Casey. Why did Kevin drop out? 
should we just move on like that? Sure. Or should we? Okay, very good. So heel hooks are illegal in the gi. Yes, heel hooks are illegal in the gi. Heel hooks are um, legal with no gi. And, you know, the crossing over of the leg over the knee is legal. Uh, a lot of people were wondering about that because in the IBJJF, you can't do that. You can't uh, cross the leg over. I don't feel like that's an issue. Um, and slamming is illegal. No slamming of any kind. Uh, I, I, it probably doesn't need to be said, but I'm sure eye gouging, uh, uh, fish hooking. So of course. Yeah. Any kind of striking or any kind of um, direct kind of usage of anything that's, that's not a direct submission is illegal. Absolutely. What about neck cranks? Uh, neck cranks are legal. Okay. Yeah. If so you, a twister would be legal as well then? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So Kevin Casey, you asked. Is um, Kevin Casey, it's been his dream to compete at the highest level within MMA. And he just got accepted into the Ultimate Fighter TV show. So he, mm. like, the, the first fight for him was going to happen, um, what was it, uh, 10 days or six days after our event. And he couldn't afford to get any kind of little tweak, you know, on his neck or on his shoulder or anything to, to, you know, take away his chances of going in there and competing for a chance to get into the, the house, you know. But he got accepted on the show and then he has to fight to get into the house. And uh, it's something that, you know, he's always wanted to do. So, you know, we have to... Man, he, he really wanted to do that, you know? Nice. We wish Kevin the best on that. Definitely. Oh, definitely. It should be great. Which fight are you? Oh, sorry, Jeff. I just wanted to ask, um, did you have, was Zhangji sort of waiting to replace anyone, or was it something you just approached him with? Oh, yeah, great question, man. Zhangji was, um, like, in the very beginning, before this event even went public, we let Zhangji know, like, hey, man, we really want, you know, to have you in the event. We, I've always wanted him to be in the event. I talked to him before he came by our academy, and he's like, man, for sure, for sure. And then when it actually started materializing, and I called him, he wasn't anywhere to be found, and I guess he was in Europe and then Brazil, and his schedule just didn't, it just didn't work for his schedule. Uh, so we absolutely wanted him the whole time, and it was, it was kind of a, an interesting you know, blessing that came through, and it was really cool. Because a lot of people are saying the Shanji, um, the Shanji match, you know, Shanji, having Shanji in is actually a better match. You know, yeah, a lot of, of people course. are a bit more interested. It seems. No, it makes complete sense. You know, like on paper, Shanji is like obviously he's on a whole different level. You know, who is Kevin Casey? This guy, you know, but right. Kevin is absolutely the most. You know, he's on the whole different level as far as a competitor and an athlete and an individual and somebody who I really don't like training with. So personally, <laughs> so I know he's extremely dangerous and somebody who would go in there and give Dean or any one of these guys a run for their money. You know, right. so. Nobody knows that, but we know that. So right. we, we felt like it would be cool and a chance for him to go out there and showcase his skills. But hey, next time, you know. Which fight are you personally mm -hmm. most interested in watching? <sighs> interested in watching. Man, it's so hard, right? It's like asking you to choose a That's kill. That's how good right? it is. <laughs> ah. Okay, man. Um, who is it? Oh, man. Man, I would have to say... Um, it's hard, man. I would have to say my brother and, and Andre yep. is going to be very interesting. I mean, Hadron Bouchesha, like, equally is, you know, exciting to me, you know. Um, yeah, but, you know, the way I see it for me is, is very, uh, you know, it's very unbiased. You know, I, I really want to see just amazing jujitsu take place. You know, I, I don't really feel like I wish I was more emotionally connected, but it's, it's hard for me. You know, like I feel and plus I'm like in a kind of a promoter position. So I feel like way more disconnected, you know, rather than just being a competitor or just being in my brother's corner or just, you know, so I feel like as an outsider, I'm saying, man, this is all going to be really exciting. And, you know, it's, it's great. It's really That's great. how I feel, too. People always ask me you know, who I favor in this match. Like he's just said. I want to see good jujitsu. Yeah, man, that's okay, what man. that's what makes it happen. You get those stars and you make them collide. You know, that's that's explosive. Everybody knows how good Andre Galvao is because he competes regularly. <laughs> Your brother does not compete a lot regularly, so a lot of people are, are counting him out out of this match, saying that Andre has the definite edge. What's your opinion on that? Man. Um it definitely gets the people going right because they don't know right. they wish they knew they wish they could like count he don't out but they can't right. even the guys who are like man he don't gonna get strangled they're only saying that because they feel like a little bit of like ah you know but hey it makes complete sense you know that somebody would feel that way and hey it is what it is and it's possible that he could be out of his league you know that he could go in there and just get completely dominated and controlled and i know that for hedon personally it would be just a learning experience you know he would just be like wow amazing like you know either i want to train harder and get more in tune with this or man i just want to teach more or that was a fun experience or he's not you know he's not at the level where he's like so concerned for his life you know i know that personally but 
I think um, you know it definitely is is going to be a tough match for him. You know he can't just walk in there and, and fall asleep or anything, but it's going to be it's very serious. You know, so does Huron train with world champions much? Yeah, man. He um, right now he's training with Crone. He's training with um, Shanji. He's training with um, Kevin Casey. He's training with um, a couple other guys. Brendan Schaub, the UFC fighter, a couple other guys, and you know, but he's he's down to train with anybody. You know, he's not. So, and they, they go for it, they get down. Right. Yeah. I mean, that kind of puts a silence to the question of like, he's never felt that level with, you know, Shanji and, and those guys, he's been there. And I, I can tell you, it's not like people are getting tapped really fast, you know, right. <laughs> but yeah, it's good. How did that match come about when you formed this event? Were you like, I gotta get my brother in there or did? Man, honestly, um, no, man. I, for me, man, from the beginning, I was just thinking, I gotta get the best guys possible. And it was hard, like in the beginning, it was like I was running against the ocean, you know, I was running in the current just, and it was hard and like, you know, contacting people and getting people to even wake up, you know, to even, hey, this is happening and, you know, and so it was no joke. So part of it was, Hidon was like my go-to because he's my brother, I can just call him. Like, hey man, you gotta do this, you know what I mean? You can't, right. I'm doing this, you can't not do this. So it was more on that level, it wasn't like, hey man, you know, uh, yeah, I wanna really showcase you or anything, you know? Like, it's just really about access, you know? And the more access I can get to better guys. So he was willing to do it, and at a certain point he wasn't willing to do it. He had said like, no man, I can't do it, I have to do this, I'm, I'm, they want me to go to India and do some conference and they do all this stuff, and I'm just thinking, man, okay, like, and then eventually he's like, man, cool, we'll do it, great. And uh, yes, I knew it would be very exciting to have him in, especially when I figured out that he could go against Andre Gavon. Mm -hmm. I just thought, like, at first I was thinking, man, he could be in it, it could be great, it would be cool to have him, he's here on Gracie. And then, oh man, Andre Gavon, that's gonna be amazing, and you know, and then it started to really pick up, and he right. was like, man, that would be an interesting match, and you know, he's, uh, yeah, so he's always open to a little challenge and something cool. I was gonna say, I can imagine with Huron, you just kind of plant that seed and watch it grow, right? I don't know, man, yeah, I guess you can say that, you know, and yeah, he, you know, he's definitely taking it very serious, you know, so it's definitely grown to, right. to be something very serious for him. Was there anybody that you asked to be in it that for some reason or another didn't work out that you really wanted them to? Rodolfo Vieira, yeah. Man, we wanted him, and he um, he said that there was a competition. He was gonna win a car, so I was like, okay, well, I don't know if I'm gonna pay you more than the car is worth. You know, maybe we could have, but maybe he just wanted a car or something. He didn't want to leave Brazil, mm -hmm. but he didn't know. I don't think the magnitude either. You know, so he, I think at this point, you know, in the future for future events, he might be more interested. Right. Hopefully, what does Metamoris mean? Man, Metamoris, what does it mean for me now? Well, does it mean anything? Or is it not just a made-up really. word? Yeah, not really. Okay. Now, it comes from a book that I read about an Indian character who was very serious about uniting tribes, you know? So he came to all these different tribe leaders, these chiefs, and he was saying, guys, you know, we gotta come together, we gotta help each other out, you know? And like, he was kind of a, like a promoter of the unity, you know? So I, I felt that was cool. Like, I associated with that, and I felt like, man, kind of like bringing together the jujitsu community is like bringing together tribes, you know? So that was like kind of underlying purpose, but other than that, I've at this point I have a whole another meaning for it, you know, and it keeps moving forward. So it's good. Uh, we have a question from the chat room. Several people have asked, "Have you uh, have you ruled with Hickson before?" Yes. So yeah. the next question is obviously, what, what was what was your takeaway from that, man? Dude, rolling with Hickson was magical, man. It's like magical, you know. And he's like he's so like esoteric as it is, you right. know. And, is like uh, it, it was exactly like what you would imagine it to be. So it was very exciting, very, um, very intuitive. You know, like very, very special. You know, it was very cool for me personally. You know, I don't know like if you're a blue belt, you might not take as much from it. You know, I felt like I was, I just gotten ready for him to show me what he showed me. You know, right? <laughs> He's like, here, take that. I was, ah, oh, okay. You know, but yeah, it was it was exciting, man. It was really good. Was it any one thing? Was like in intricacies or just that? the role as a whole man it was a lot of different things yeah right. it was like a lot of different things that you know like honestly you, you have to take a Hicks on seminar or you know right. take a private class with me and you know ask me about it or whatever but it, it would be very um, it would be very tough to explain right now you know right. but definitely a lot to do with like just positioning yourself and, and making it hard for somebody to even move and, and a lot of different things you know it's cool 
the idea of jujitsu is to enable the person to wait for the right opportunity to defeat the opponent. Jiu-Jitsu today craving for a better evaluation of who is the man in Jiu-Jitsu. Where there's no points, will be a motivation aspect to fighters go for a submission. We start with one family, you know, and uh, I'll be fighting against one guy he has part of this family, you know. Maybe he sees me as like, whatever, just he don't race, he has been around for a long time, you know, he's just, he's spoiled. But what's the worst that can happen? They taps me, which is very unlikely. Roger is one of my idols. For me, it's a great opportunity to fight against him. You know, it's difficult to see what will happen. I think I would expect to, to reach a good position and I don't let him escape. I think I'm my best to submit him. For this fight, I just go and do what I need to do. Of course, I'm going to compete to win and do my best. Of course, I'm going to fight, you know. I respect him a lot, but I will do my best to win. 20 minutes and submissions only, so I'm sure it will be a great match. To win, you have to finish the person. You have to tap them out. Got a couple other questions about the Metamorris event. Um, you mentioned commentators. Do you know who the commentators are? Can you announce them? Yeah, my brother Henry Gracie and um, Javier Vasquez. Nice. Yeah. Cool. And there's been a couple questions about the price. Have you decided on a pay-per-view price? We have. Not willing to say. <laughs> Man, I was actually going to release it today, but I don't want to. I can't release it with you guys because I can't. You know what I mean? No, we get it. We, but yeah. It's, you'll, you'll find out. It'll if it's less out. than ninety nine ninety five, I think it's a good deal. <laughs> Follow us on Facebook, and uh, you'll, you'll see very soon. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So 10 years from now, what do you want to be known for? What, what's your role in the jiu-jitsu community? Man. Man, you know, I, I don't know, man. Like that's, I don't think that's up to me to even decide. You know, I, uh, I'm just trying to do the most that I can, you know, and... and um, create more opportunities you know if anything I'll be the guy who I'll be the Russell Simmons you know the guy who really connected the dots and, and made it possible for a lot of guys to come off the street and really make a lot of money you know and really leverage their brands and their names and so I guess you know doing something that that is uh, kind of a foundation for for athletes to be the biggest that they can be you know that's, that's my mission right now. And of course it's gonna change and there's gonna be different elements. And, but at the same time, if you catch me teaching a, a class or a seminar, I'll be that guy who just showed you an amazing move and supported you at a certain level in your jiu-jitsu. So there's so many different things that I do for jiu-jitsu personally, but you know, it's, it's my whole life in so many ways. You know? And in some ways it's half of my life. You know? And I have a whole other aspect of myself that you know, I wanna explore and, and do. And, you know, so I'm not just, oh, I gotta train, I gotta put my gi on, you know, it's, it's a lot, it's a holistic thing for me. Well, but, I think that's great, you're giving opportunities to these guys, and I always get bummed out when some of the sport's best guys go to MMA, so I think right. you're giving them one more reason to stay in jiu-jitsu. That pisses me off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm that guy that gets pissed off. When that happens, I'm that guy. So call me up and just, you know, we'll talk about it. Okay. Right? Sure. Speaking of MMA, you, you're three and zero now, right? <laughs> and your last match was. I was one of those guys, you know. I right? had to go to MMA. Why it did was, you go? Was it for the money? Yeah, man. Good question. Was it for the money? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh man. It was for um, for so many reasons, man. I, I like I had to feel it, you know. I had to feel like what is this like? What is this, you know, this experience of going in there and fighting and having there be this infinite space of potential, you know, and possibilities. And you can get punched, you can get kicked, you can get elbowed, you can get submitted. So many things can happen, you know, and you have to go in there and be ready for anything, you know, and that, excel, it, that in itself is, is my main inspiration, is my main driver, you know, and of course, yeah, the, the money, and I wanna fight for the most amount of money that I can and, you know, make money and feed my kids and do the whole thing, but, it's, you know, it was good, man. It was, most of all, it was a very spiritual experience competing. A lot of guys that I talk to that are high-level jiu-jitsu guys, after they do MMA and they come back, jiu-jitsu seems so less stressful because you don't have to worry about anybody punching you. Did you feel that? that? Did you feel more confident in your jiu-jitsu after doing MMA? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah you know, I felt, yeah. 
definitely. Did it change the way you rolled and the way you approached training? Like, yes, because I can imagine you know after you were very much a jiu-jitsu fighter, which I loved, and I think uh, I would see that coming back to training, you now have you know you can't help but have these things rattling in the back of your mind that. Yeah. Would I get punched from here? Would I get kicked from here? Definitely to, to keep in mind the punches and cer- within certain positions. But uh, then again, I wasn't competing in jujitsu. You know, right. anytime you compete on any like high level, you learn things that you wouldn't learn if you were just rolling in an academy. You know, right. so that was my space to learn certain lessons. You know, that I didn't learn because I wasn't training to go compete against the top guys or be right. in the you know in the black belt division or whatever it is. And um, that's, you know, that's kind of the essence of it, you know. So, yeah, a lot to learn there, you know, and definitely picked up a lot. And the way that I teach self-defense was affected by my MMA. I the imagine. way I teach jiu-jitsu in general, of course. And it's just, it was the pressure, you know. It was the idea of being under that pressure and, and having to succeed and having to stay focused and not lose your cool. Right. What was your impression of your first match? Was it, you know, was it surreal or were you, you know, hyper-focused or...? Mm, or all yeah. of the above man yeah good question man was the first one because I think everybody in the jiu jitsu career at some point at least has a question of like what would it be like if I went into MMA you know and you, you answered that question oh man it's, it's hard to say for anybody you know it's hard to say for, for somebody else how they're going to feel or you know my first fight was in front of 40,000 people you know right it was my first like debut so that's a lot different than what a lot of people would experience i think but right. but who knows what the difference in the pressure is you know um so for me i felt good i felt progressively better in each of my fights as mm-hmm. far as my my focus and what you're talking about as far as hyper focus but you know hey it's uh yeah, so the first one I think was definitely more surreal, more more less control, whereas it started to get progressively easier for right. sure. What was what was one of the things you remembered, or a couple of things you remembered most, or most vividly from your first fight? Man, the first thing I re- like the, scenes or thoughts or yeah, man, um, I haven't thought about it in a while. But when you said that, I thought about how I slipped on the ground. You know, I got hit and then my foot slipped at the same time. So I fell down and I kind of like had to jump around. It was very like, right. yeah, so that was interesting. And just, yeah, just think about how you, you naturally, you know, you in that situation, you're in like kind of in survival mode, you know, so right. you naturally kind of get back up to your feet and it's, it's very, um, you know, you're kind of out of your control. Like you don't really have control of your body, you know, it's right. very much a natural you you're just doing what's natural for you and what you've trained and it's just all going to take place you know i mean other than your brothers um did any of your uncles or your father have you know words of advice or did they help you train before you went to your first matches or any of your matches not really man my uncles you know it wasn't it wasn't really as much from them um you know i've trained with different with different uncles periodically along the way but it wasn't like uh, as much of a um no, like not like what you would think, you right. know. It's not like my dad was running the training camp and, you know, he's doing his thing and we were training and getting ready. And he would come in every once in a while right. and say, man, do that. Do that right there. And you grab, grab him like that, you know, and hold him down and don't let him up. Holly, get up. Okay, now switch. You try to get up. Holly, just hold him down. Little, like, games, you know, right. that you would just do. And when you're very tired, it just make, it pisses you off and you right. have to keep going, you know. Um, but that's yeah it's little things like that here and there you know but not right. anything crazy but yeah your last match was or your last fight was against one of my favorite guys in MMA wow. Sakuraba yeah um, that was a legendary match because he'd beaten so many of your family members yeah. was that your main reason for taking that fight no um, yeah I mean I guess you can say indirectly you know the fact that there was he was had beaten different family members that I felt like okay this would be an interesting match, but not in the sense that I need to avenge anybody you know or like this is my, a fight for the family no <laughs> it's not a movie you know it's real life you know for me it was just an opportunity to f- feel myself and go in there and train and see how how everything goes and f- test myself against somebody who you know has beaten different family members and, and more like on a spiritual level you know so it was good and it was cool. You, did, you had a great performance, but looking Thanks. back on that match, how do you feel about it? You're a guy that, that was coming up through the ranks, fighting a guy yeah. who's arguably at the end of his career, maybe fought more than he should. Yeah. How do you feel about that victory now? 
man, you know, like a lot of people feel like it was it was like a, you know, oh man, because you're younger, like, man, I feel like I haven't seen anybody go in there and control Sakuraba with jujitsu. Have you? No. Not even Mayhem Miller when he fought him after me. You know, the only way to beat Sakuraba really right now is to go in and overwhelm him, overwhelm him with punches. Is to knock him out because he, he can't, the hand speed is too fast for him. So he gets hit and then it's like he can't handle anything else. But to go in there and get him and control him, I, I thought was, was interesting. You know, I, I felt good about that. I felt like, man, that was cool because he's a very solid grappler and I can feel it. So it was more of a jujitsu match, you know, it wasn't like, you know, even though, yeah, he could have punched me and I could have punched him. It was a lot of a, of a jujitsu match, which I think was really cool. And I feel good about it. I just feel like, man, it was just fun, you know. But I don't feel like I, I took something over him or I took something from him whatsoever. You know, like you can't take anything from him, you know, regardless. If anything, he's giving to us by saying, hey, we've done, you know, I've trained jujitsu to prepare myself to be the best that I can be. And I beat your uncles with this jujitsu. Jujitsu wins. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard to say, like, hey. He's just a special guy, you know, even for me, I'm not special, you know, it's, it's what you know, it's where you learn that, you know, and uh, so it's cool. It's a testament to jujitsu, you know, I felt like that whole match was just respect. Jujitsu is cool. Did he say anything interesting to you after the match? No, man. Oh, yeah, he just said, man, did that punch hurt, that one punch? And I was like, yeah, man, fuck yeah. You know? <laughs> so he was like... <laughs> He was like, man, cool, you know, that was it. But he's, his English was very broken, and we right. kind of got separated, and then that was it, you know. Do you have any ambition to do any more MMA? Yeah, definitely. Is there somebody in particular you'd like to fight? Matt Hughes. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Sounds like you do want to avenge some of your family members' uh, defeats. Yeah, man. It just sounds fun, you know, and it found it sounds like I've, I've already found a niche kind of, you know, <laughs> it's not like it's actually really that personal, you know, like I'll go sit and talk with him and like, you know, have, hang out and have a barbecue. Like I'm not really there's no malice, you know, but it's like, hey, it would be fun, you know, and you're like a kind of an OG and I don't I'm not like a regular MMA guy, you know, I'm just like this guy who does jujitsu and who I think, you know, I can put some pressure on you, but it would just be fun, you know, so. But I would just like to roll with him and roll with different guys that are in the game, you know? Like, I'd like to roll with John Jones and roll with these guys and see, like, how they feel, and it's good. Would you ever consider competing in an IBJJF event or any kind of grappling tournament? Um, yeah, man, I've considered it, you know? And it just every time I consider it to a certain point, I feel like it's cool, but, you know, the idea of going in there and preparing specifically to be successful in those rules, it, it, sound, it feels constraining to me. It doesn't feel natural, you know? So it's, it, uh, I guess at a certain point I could and just say, oh, okay, no matter what happens, I'll just go do it. But it definitely is more likely that I'll compete in my own event. Mm. Right. Yeah. All right, Halik, well, we've learned a lot about you today. Thanks a lot for spending your time with us. Uh, anything you want to plug before we leave? Man, um, metamorris.com, check it out. You know, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and get ready, man. It's gonna be, it's gonna be exciting. We're almost two weeks out. Yeah. October 7th, do we, do we have a, uh, no, October 14th, and do we have a, a time when that's going to start? Yeah, it's going to start at 3 p.m., the show, and uh, we're going to do a pre-show for the live stream at around 2.30, so it should be good, man. Should be really the pre-show good. is just going to show some training footage from various places? No, or? no, like the commentators kind of talking and warming people up and, and kind of getting into, you know, what's happening and, yeah, more of like commentators and some other little things, but nothing too serious. And there's seven matches, is that right? Yeah, uh, yes, exactly. All right. Uh, did you have a technique you want to show today, too? Uh, no, man. Not okay. today. All right. Yeah. Well, you spent uh, plenty of time with us today. Thanks, Thanks so man. much. for we, It was fascinating hearing about your background and the Metamorphosis event. Thank you. Yeah. Absolute honor. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. That concludes this installment of This Week in BJJ. Subscribe on iTunes, watch and review past episodes, and then be sure to join us again next Friday night right here for another live edition of This Week in BJJ.